you know, a few days ago, I had quite a few people from my Twitch community ask me to do a first impressions or review of Warzone 2. I've played all of the Battle Royale games going back to PUBG and everything in between, the good, the bads, and the uglies. I played the first Warzone for a very long time. One of my favorite Battle Royale experiences ever was Blackout, which of course was before Warzone. I still love that game to this day. I've played a slew of FPS games. I have a lot of experience playing FPS games going back well over two decades at this point. And initially, my thoughts about Warzone were very positive. I went back to the campaign initially and played that. I played the Modern Warfare multiplayer. Enjoyed aspects of that as well, although there were some alarm bells, which ended up being correct. And the first day or so of Warzone 2, I was having a good time. But as I've put more and more hours into this game, I'm realizing that my hype, my optimism for this game is starting to run dry. There is a leak somewhere and it can't be plugged. The only plug is going to be if some patches come out and fix some of these problems and I have a bad feeling that that's not going to happen or at least not anytime soon. Warzone 2 is a frustrating mess. It's chaotic but not really in the ways that you'd want a battle royale experience to play out. So I'm going to explain my thought process here and of course this is very subjective. You may or very well will likely disagree with some of my points and if you do let's start a conversation in the comment section below because I am curious on your opinions. These are my opinions based off probably putting about 100 hours into Warzone. I have played both controller and I've also played mouse and keyboard. Although most of that time has been a mouse and keyboard. The first issue with this game which kind of goes hand in hand with a couple of the other points as well is the crossplay being enforced on mouse and keyboard players. So again, I'm a PC player, I'm not a console player. Crossplay being enforced to me is an absolute head scratcher. I'm a big fan of choice, and I think that console players and PC gamers alike should be given the choice of whether they want to do crossplay or not. Do they want it on or off? It's not an option for PC players, and it's not an option for Xbox players either, but it is for PlayStation players. This is garbage. Now, one of the reasons why this is garbage is that it's a, a negative for both sides of the equation. This isn't only a PC gamer's gripes, but also console players have legitimate reasons to not want to play against PC players as well. One of the biggest issues I have with this game is the aim assist. Now, I know some people have just rolled their eyes. They're like, oh, here we go again. Another PC elitist complaining about controllers. I have played controller myself. I've played controller on multiple FPS games. I've done this on Apex Legends, which is another game where PC players and console players can play against one another. And even at the higher levels, the pro level, you have both mouse and keyboard and controller players playing at the same tournaments against and with each other. That's not unheard of. And what I found in Apex is that although there is aim assist on the controllers, it's not really that bad. It helps. It's there to give you a slight helping hand, as it should, because without it, controller players would be in real trouble. It does help, but it will not make a mediocre player very good, or a terrible player mediocre. It's a slight push in the right direction, but that's all it is. Aim assist in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, it's not just stabilizers. This thing is literally pointing you in the right direction and it's giving you every single bit of help it possibly can. It's ridiculous. And I say this is someone that's put at least 10 hours in on controller in Warzone, in Modern Warfare multiplayer as well. I was astounded and mortified to see just how strong the aim assist was. And this isn't just me saying this. This is console players themselves complaining that it's too op this is pro level people at the top level of call of duty playing that are saying the same thing people are for the most part agreeing the aim assist is broken in this game and when you are a mouse and keyboard player getting beamed from 100 meters away from a weapon that ordinarily has a lot of recoil and you see the kill cam and their their aim has not moved at all every bullet is sent to mass and you can't do anything about it when you see someone tracking you even when you're running backwards and forwards it is so demotivating to be a mouse and keyboard player and see that happen and it happens so regularly the aim assist is broken 
So when you're forced to play against controller players from consoles in every single lobby, this is a terrible experience for PC players. And here's the other thing. Because of how powerful aim assist is in this game, now I'm seeing more and more PC players plug their controller in to try and combat it. So now everyone's warning up each other. It's like an arms race in Warzone where everyone's now like, holy shit, I have to put a controller in in order to stay somewhat competitive here. Now I understand that the top level PC players are still able to clap cheeks. I get that. But for the average, bang average, average Joe player on mouse and keyboard, it feels awful to play this game right now. Now, the reason it sucks for console players as well, because I'm not just going to be one-dimensional in this first impressions and review of Warzone 2, is that where do most of the cheaters come from? It's the PC side of things. So now console players are forced to play with cheaters. They're forced to play with hackers. They can't just turn off the cross-play and play primarily console. And of course, some people can hack on console as well. I'm not saying that's not possible, but the vast majority of cheaters are on the PC platform. I know this from decades worth of experience of being a PC gamer primarily. So console players are getting wrecked as well, for no reason at all. Now, the counter argument that I've heard is, oh, well, it's to cut costs and it's, to, you know, they don't want to put more servers out. This is a triple A developer releasing one of the biggest games of the year, one of the most hype games, which already has hundreds of thousands of people playing it. Last time I checked, it was like 450k were actively playing the game. And that, I think that was only on Steam. So this is ludicrously popular as a as a game, and yet you are forcing people to do crossplay. For me, there's no excuse for that. That's unforgivable. You have failed the PC side. You have failed the Xbox side, in my opinion. So going on from that as well, I did touch on it a little bit with the cheating element of stuff with console players having to deal with that. But of course, PC players do as well. The cheating issue right now in the game is is serious. I released a video on my YouTube channel about two or three days ago on one of the first days of release and it's called Warzone 2 has a serious cheating problem in which I pretty much just whacked my OBS on and started recording a guy that had killed me and on the kill cam it became very apparent he was cheating. He traced me through like three walls from 200 meters away and instantly hit me in the head with a pistol and killed me and after watching him and recording the video of him blatantly cheating. I had a ton of people responding in the comments saying the same thing. It feels like half of the lobby is cheating in my games. Every single game has a cheater in it, etc, etc, etc. There is a serious issue right now. I don't know if Ricochet is just not doing the job. I don't know what the reason is. It's kind of irrelevant. When you have this many cheaters in the game, it makes it such a terrible experience. But it also adds on top of this aim assist paranoia. What I mean by this is when you're a mouse and keyboard player and you've been killed multiple times and you've watched the kill cam of someone just locking onto you and never moving off and killing you instantly, just beaming you from like 100 meters away. You start to get into like this really garbage mentality and I realize that's very much a, a you thing, but I think it's also an understandable thing that does happen. Where now at some stage you think every time you die it's aim assist or a cheater. And it gets to the point where it just demotivates you so much that you just can't be bothered to play anymore and you just give up and stop playing. Like, why are you investing all this time and all this effort into a game that fundamentally just doesn't feel fun to play whatsoever? So that really exacerbates that problem. The next point is... When you combine those previous two with terrible servers, loads of crashing problems, and tons and tons of bugs... It's a cocktail for disaster. It feels like one in three, one in four servers that I play on have dreadful ping, where the ping is going from like 50 to 250, and these are supposedly EU servers. The registration's completely off, people are moonwalking, they're warping, they're stuttering, they're lagging all over the place. So not only can you not really fight anybody, you can't even really move. And you've just waited probably like five minutes to queue into a game. Then you've got the pre-game lobby. Then you jump down from the plane. This is all adding up to time and effort. And time is the most valuable resource. It's very much limited. So you don't want to be wasting your life away on terrible servers. And then some of the servers that are perfectly fine and you are having a pretty good time will then just crash. Inexplicably, 
you'll just freeze. And my PC is a very high level one. I've also spoken to a lot of other PC players. They're all having the same problems. There are loads of crashing issues in Warzone 2. For no apparent reason, inexplicably, you will just freeze and you'll get thrown to the desktop. And there is no reconnect function in this game, which is bananas to me. You would think you would have to try and put in some form of reconnect system into this game, but there isn't one. So you crash and you're just done. You could be in the last five players, you could be in the last 10 players in like a 15 kill game, feeling really good about things. Boom, you've crashed, get wrecked. Tons of bugs as well where textures don't load in properly, where loot just appears to disappear from, from thin air. You can't even get your hands on it, which brings us into the looting system itself, which is also trash. The looting system in this game is dreadful. Uh, I don't know if this is tacked on last minute. I don't know if it was an afterthought because of the DMZ version in the game right now, but the looting system, even when it works, it doesn't feel very good. But how many times as a Warzone player have you been sat there and the box that's underneath a player that you've just killed is inaccessible because it's underneath their body and their corpse. Or it's underneath some ammo, or it's underneath a weapon. And so you just don't have access to it now. You can't press the, the, the box, you can't get in to loot the, the money and the kill streaks and the self-revive and the really important stuff. It's just gone. Doesn't exist. The looting system's terrible. The gulag system. Why is there a Jailer? Why is it now 2v2? Why do I have to rely on potentially a complete randomer that more often than not seems to go AFK and do nothing in the Gulag at all? Why can't it just be the classic system like it was before? The Gulag in the last Warzone was brilliant. Why have we changed that? Why is there a Jailer that now pops in and decides with a minigun to just clap your cheeks if like the other two people on the other team are just constantly running away from you and you can't get close enough to them to kill them? Now there's just a jailer there. Now I understand that the idea of if you kill the jailer, all four people survive, but I have been playing this game for like a hundred hours. Not once in all of that time have the gulag killed the jailer. Never. Never happens. Hasn't happened a single time that I've seen. Also, why is it possible for you now to team up with people? Why is there elements in the game that allows you to do that? We're playing a battle royale. If I'm playing solos, I don't want to get clapped off a team of five people that have decided that they're going to just band together, run around the map, and just annihilate everyone else. That is a shit experience. I am playing solo battle royale because I want to play against solo players, 1v1 times 150. I don't queue in for a solo game in order to get my ass clapped off five different dudes from five different directions. At least buy me dinner first. Like, why is this a thing? It sucks. If I wanted to play against multiple people, I would just queue into a quads battle royale and I would select not to fill the squad. Ridiculous. And finally, the current state of the game is so camp focused, it's bananas. And I think a part of that is because of the rest of the things we've talked about. When you're worried about aim assist, when you're worried about cheaters, when you're worried about a trash a looting system and, and bad potential servers you're more inclined to sit in a room and let it just all blow over and maybe get lucky and shut somebody down in the back for all of their loot as a side point by the way guys can we please for the love of christ take mounting out of this game mounting is absolute filth why does this exist why are we giving stabilizers to, to little timmies that can't aim properly and now we give them the choice of mounting on a windowsill and just camping there forever and just beam people like no issues whatsoever there's no recall in their gun they can take an lmg with like a hundred rounds and just literally spit fire at people spit magma at people and they can't do anything in return because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time and someone with trash aim gets no recoil with mounting why is this a thing in an fps game i will never understand why mounting was put in call of duty it sucks it's garbage please remove it now i know i've just been on like a 15 minute rant okay but the reason for that is because i'm normally an optimistic person and i know that sounds like a strange thing to say I only feel this passionately about these points because underneath the surface, I think there is a gem hidden be beneath the rough 
of Warzone 2. I really believe there is. There are moments in Warzone 2 when you are having a fantastic time. When a lot of these other issues aren't taking front and center, you can have amazing moments in Warzone 2. I've had some great laughs with friends playing this game. The gunplay is really solid when you don't have rats mounting on walls and camping in buildings. The game is beautiful. If you can, you don't even have to have the max settings on this game. It looks really good. Really, really good. And for the most part, although there's a lot of issues with crashing and terrible servers, it's optimized pretty well. Additionally, I got friends with fairly low tier PCs that can run this game on 70, 80 FPS. And it's quite smooth for them. Also, I've heard a lot of people complain about the map. I personally think it's great. I think it's a lot of fun. A lot of contracts, plenty of ways to build up cash, whether it's the normal bounties of go and, you know, kill somebody or make yourself the most wanted. You got the safes as well, which gives you tons of cash and XP. You got the intel, gives you tons of cash and XP. There's a lot to be doing in this. There's also got some strongholds and some AI elements as well. I'm not sure if I like this just yet, but I at least find it interesting that it's a part of the game. And I'm assuming as I understand the game more and more, these things will click into place. There are a lot of things to be hype about with Warzone 2. And as I said, in the first day of playing this game, I had that hype. I had that special connection with this game, but I've just been worn down and jaded by all the garbage that's in this game right now. So I know it's been a really negative video, I understand, and I don't like making them, believe it or not, I really don't. And I know it's difficult to listen to someone whine and rant for 15 minutes, but it's all for a good reason. I hope, I really hope that some patches come out and some good decisions are made and they make this game as good as I think it could be. It could be really, really special, but until those patches come out and still until some changes are put into place, I won't be touching Warzone 2 again. And that makes me really sad. I'll see you in the next video, guys.